all right, how do you set up gain on an external amplifier? I don't know how to do that, or I don't really understand it. I want to understand it better, you know, that kind of thing. And we've, we've kind of talked about it a little bit on the podcast over the last few months, last six months, year, whatever it's been, but yeah. they kind of, they kind of wanted just another overview on it. So it's because I was kind of thinking about that. I was sort of thinking like we could come up with a kind of a, a, a few examples of things that aren't normally correct but people do it anyway because they don't know any better and kind of just give an overview of how to do it right so i have a couple school teacher type examples here let me grab them there you go bring it on man so here is a behringer nx 3000 it's a typical amp i've got a crown on the ground too they're both the same way these are gain input attenuators everyone calls them gain knobs or even some people think they're volume knobs they're not that so first and foremost i want to explain to your audience that you can get full power out of this amplifier with the gain knob set at the lowest level it's a it's a gain matching structure this is called an input attenuator a gain input attenuator not a not a gain knob so that's the official title of it if you have a lot of voltage coming in you need less mm -hmm. um on this knob so your indent should your your device should go counterclockwise to the leftmost position if right. you have weak voltage coming out of your avr then you'd want to match your gain by raising the gain attenuation knob and so it's a it's like a it's a balancing act or a or a handshake this does not mean automatically that you have to if you want full power to the amp you got to go to max volume it's just not true mm -hmm. say you had uh there's a there's an input voltage sensitivity on all these amplifiers and you can look it up to get the right number and if you put in max voltage on the input attenuate on that input voltage line, you do not need to go anywhere near full volume on this gain attenuator knob to get full volume. So I now, want to make that crystal clear. Before you move on, I think it's very important too to mention that if your amp does not have attenuator knobs and you get amps that have different voltage sensitivities, you can get yourself into a bit of a conundrum. So this is a heavier beast. It's an old iron crown. Same sort of thing, right? Right. It has in gain input attenuators. And yes, it does get louder as you turn it up, but it's not meant to be a volume knob. When you're setting up your, your amplifier, you're going to take a bunch of uh, discs that I have here in front of me have examples for checking your SPL. So we've got the Spears and Monsel disc. It has on disc three uh, mm -hmm. test tones. The WOW Disney disc has test tones. These ultimate dvd collection they're getting old now but they have test tones the dolby atmos discs have test tones what you want to do is set your if you're if you're starting up from scratch with like your main speaker setup put your gain at about one third on your amp to start you want your spl trims on your channel level so if you go into your receiver or your pre-pro lower your channel level trims down to like negative eight negative ten negative six and that type of range and then use your input and attenuator knobs to get up to that 75 dB typical for like retail type equipment. I'm, I made a little list on AVS forum to kind of get more input, but like your Denon, your Mance, your Onkyo, your Yamaha, like your commercial type retail AVRs, they have an internal offset. So you're going to you're going to take your main listening volume and this there's a lot of steps here and I don't want to make it complicated. I'm trying to water it down or, or, or make it easy to understand. You're going to take your main listening volume, that's your overall volume. You're going to set that to zero. If it's set to relative, it would be zero. If it's set to absolute, it would be typically like 80. Um, so let me, let me back up a step for that. If your receiver, as you turn up the volume, goes from negative, say, negative 30 to zero type range or negative 60 to zero type range, then that is set up to be a reference volume scale. I had to look at my note to make sure I had it right. And if it goes from like zero to 98, for instance, then that's an absolute volume scale. THX reference is 85 dB average dialogue, average content, 105 dB peaks, 115 dB peaks for the subwoofers. So speakers are 105. All your speakers are supposed to be hitting 105 at zero as a, as a full peak, like full signal, zero dBFS at your main listening position should be 105 from every speaker. And from the subwoofers, 115. That's defined as THX reference. That's meant to make so it's, there's a standard at all the theaters that they can adjust the sound to. Your receiver, if you buy an off-the-shelf retail consumer receiver, it has an internal offset. 
and they make it 75 dB that you're going to set your test tones to. So you turn your main listening volume to zero or 80, depending on which way your volume is set up. And then you set your test tones to 75. And that 75 has that tend to be offset. So you're really at 85. And the reason they did that offset is because if you had like a tone theater in box set up or maybe some inexpensive or older speakers, you can actually blow a speaker with 85 dB test tones. And the receiver companies just didn't even want to fight that. And also 85 dB sounds kind of loud as a test tone. So they just did that 10 dB offset. As they're setting it up, nobody's going to accuse them of blowing their speakers or anything at 75 dB. So that's why the offset's there. I hear a lot of people trying to set their gain. I went to 85 dB because that's what THX reference is. Not with your, not with your consumer product. It's going to be 75 dB. Now, Ryan's got the Storm Audio. And Ryan, correct me if I'm not right here, but I think yours is 85 dB for your test tones. Because mm -hmm. you do not have that internal offset. No. So if you have kind of more of a boutique expensive receiver, they're probably going to be more in line with like THX reference without having that thing because they're not going to be matched to cheap or inexpensive speakers that might be damaged. Well, the expectation so, too is that a lot of times with those more boutique products that they're going to be professionally calibrated. Custom installed, that yeah. kind of thing. Absolutely. So, so depending on what your product is, you can look this up online, figure out what your test tone is supposed to be made. And that's going to help you set your level. So typically you want your channel trim levels to be negative. So the range on most products is negative 12 to positive 12. That's for the commercial retail type side. <clears throat> you, want your, you want your gain trims to be on your on individual channels negative. And, and for main speakers, it probably doesn't matter too much how far negative. You do want to keep in mind that you're, if you're listening to THX reference at your zero and you say your EQ is bumping your channel trims at 150 hertz by 9 dB or something, like Odyssey, for instance, can bump up by 9 dB. You want to have that little bit of headroom so that you're not doing what's called input clipping or, or source clipping. Mm -hmm. So that would be a reason to keep your trims low. If you're not going to play to reference, say you only played a negative 10 or a negative 15, it just doesn't even matter because you're not going to be in the ballpark of even mattering about or worried about any of this stuff. But let's say you do want to have like THX cinema. You want to have it as loud as your commercial premium cinema. Maybe you want your volume levels, maybe you want your channel levels to be all like negative 9, negative 10, negative 11, negative 12 to kind of give you room to have some EQ applied. If you're not applying EQ, it doesn't matter if you don't go above zero. You can go all the way to zero. So negative 12 to zero is your range. You use your amp attenu gain attenuator knobs, put them at like maybe a third, and then use the SPL trim to kind of figure out how to get those to land. And I like negative 6, negative 8 type territory. Mm -hmm. You do not have to have... If you have a four channel amplifier, if you have a two channel amplifier, the gain knobs do not have to be input attenuator knobs do not have to be matched. They can be disparate. Your channel levels, your channel trims can be disparate. I've heard people say like, well, I need to match all my channels. So it'd be the same volume. And I put them all at negative six. No, that's not right either because each channel is going to be different because it's a slightly different distance from your seat. Mm -hmm. So this, this thing is, you know, maybe three foot further than this one to my main listing position. It's going to require more power to drive this one to the same SPL level. So you can't expect that your channel trims will be the same. They'll all be different, just like your distances will be different. And that's okay. Um, but when you're when measuring it with an SPL meter, you want that to be the same. The yes. Overall volume. Yes. So but at my main listening position, we are, are going to be different. Right. I'm going through every channel, just down the list, and I'm making sure they're all 75 dB at my seat. That's what you want to do from your main listening position. So I'm going to look through my notes here and see if we missed any topics that I kind of wanted to cover. Um, we were gonna, I was going to mention about subwoofers. Subwoofers are a little bit different altogether. So where I had talked about with main speakers, with channel levels, how you had a little bit of grace there as long as you're not going to zero volume, you can go all the way to zero. Mm -hmm. You can't do that with your subwoofer. And the reason you can't do that with your subwoofer level is because all the speakers, if you're using a crossover frequency for a crossover setting for your speakers, say you're crossing them at 80 hertz, you're crossing them at 90 hertz or 60 hertz or whatever, everything below that crossover point is getting redirected to your subs. And when that redirection happens, it sums. So the more speakers you have, the more bass is getting redirected to your subwoofers. Well, the subwoofers are already set to like go up to zero. If you're redirecting bass from 15 other speakers, they're like I am. I think the math basically says that I would be redirecting about 7 dB worth of bass to my subwoofers from my crossover points to my speakers. So that means I shouldn't go any higher than negative 7 on my subwoofer trims or I risk doing input clipping to my subwoofers up front. 
-hmm. So I try to shoot for negative and, and you're doing the same way. You're doing your game matching. When I'm trying to get the 75 dB for my subs, I try to make sure that I'm at least negative eight or below on my system because I have 15 speakers. If you have a 5.1 or 7.1, typically they'll say it's more like three dB that you have to worry about being redirected. So you're talking about, Hey, I can back that. I have from negative three to negative 12. I can put it, I can put a negative four, negative five, negative six, that type of thing. Um, this just allows you to not to send a clip signal to the, to the amplifier. And what's a clip signal? A sine wave looks like this, right? It's up and down and it's nice rounded gradual humps. A clip signal looks like this. It's squared off at the top and bottom because you've exceeded the allowance of that sound of that, of that wave. And that, that clip signal actually can be damaging to your amplifier. It can be damaging to your speakers. It's not a good thing to do. When you see the clip light on your amplifier, it could be either an input clip, like you're sending a signal that's too hot, it's clipping it at the source, or it could be an output clip. Your amplifier simply doesn't have the power to drive what you're asking it to drive. Yeah. An occasional blip of the clip light on your amplifier during a heavy scene, it's fine. Right. It's A-OK. -okay. What you don't want to see is a continuous clip light, like the light is just lit up and Internal. stays lit. Yeah. That means you're getting a square wave or you're running out of power. So you got to back that down and readjust your grain structure. If you back, if you back down the gain knob, then mm -hmm. you can increase your, it depends on which side's clipping. L l scenario A, let's say the output is clipping on the amplifier. What you're going to do is back down, back down the input attenuator knob and raise the output on the channel trim. See if it still clips. It may, it may not, but that's what you would try to do there. If it's the input clipping, then you would lower. So let's say you have 9 dB or you have 7 dB. I have 15 speakers. All 7 dB is re redirected there. If it's input clipping, then I need to lower my subwoofer trim. Mm -hmm. So my subwoofer trim goes from negative 9 to maybe negative 11, for instance. And I might raise my input attenuator knob. Now, the next thing is traditionally... On any of these amps that have the input attenuator knobs, each click, there's an indent on these. You can feel it. You can see it labeled there. Each clip is traditionally 2 dB. So if I raise the channel trim by, you know, a dB and I raise this by 2 dB, I'm getting, I'm, or by one click, I'm getting 3 dB. So what it amounts to is this is the range of, of gain structure that you can do. If you have a fixed amp, like a traditional high audiophile amp, they might have a 29x uh, gain structure. They might have a 32x gain structure. Um, I could tell the gain structure on this one by counting all the indents and multiplying by two. Clicks. Yeah. And that would tell me how many, what's my gain structure on this. Mm -hmm. um, let me look at my notes and see if I missed anything else. And maybe we can look at some questions and answer questions directly. So here's a question from Eric. He mentions kind of a question. He says, you have to have a processor to do what he's describing. I've not seen a receiver capable of what he's describing. Can you answer all, that? All receivers are capable the of what he's describing. Receivers can do it. Yeah. So you're using RCAs and stacks X instead of XLR out. As long as you have, let me step back. I shouldn't say all receivers. Any receiver with pre outs is capable of doing it. So if you have RCA pre outs or XLR pre outs, you're capable of doing this. And that's the intent of it, is, Eric, is for those types of things. Eric, what were you, what are you thinking that the, uh, an AVR, can't do that a processor can do like maybe kind of describe what you're thinking there he mentions you lower the uh sub gain and raise the voltage on a processor so i think what he what jonathan's talking about is just trim levels every avr every processor they have trim levels so you go into your levels in your settings and you can increase the level of your front left your center channel your right so i don't I don't think there's any He's other. He's asking raising or lowering the voltage going into the subs. Well, what he's what he's saying there, as far as you lowering the sub gain and raising the voltage in the processor, that accomplishes the same thing. Mm -hmm. So you're lowering the gain input knob and raising the signal voltage. Mm -hmm. You could do that in pair in parallel and have the exact same output. Um, something I want to and and maybe we need a little bit more information, Eric, on what your question is or where you're thinking. But but I want to kind of explain that I can have. And, and I, I could do this real easily. Let's do this. Yeah, let me put you back up here. So let's say I'm at, let's say I'm at about this far. Maybe it's six clicks up. 
if I put my trim on my receiver at negative 12 for the subwoofer, and this is, let's say this is running subwoofers. I put it at negative 12 and I have a six here. If I increase this, or if I decrease this, as it were, by three clicks, that's going to be 6 dB. So if I increase my voltage from negative 12 to plus six on that channel trim, I'm going to be at the exact same volume mm -hmm. because I've lowered it 6 dB here and I've raised it 6 dB there. So I just want to say, I just want to point out that that's, that's what I'm talking about when I say you can get max power out of this at any thing. It's just matching the two, the matching mm -hmm. the processor or AVR. It's six to here, half have. dozen another. It's yeah. now there's there different is... ways of solving the same problem, or you're trying to solve something else that, and they can have adverse effects into and spread out into the whole equation. Just depends on what okay. you do. I, so I, guess, oh, I, go ahead. I, I do want to say this. I, okay. I can't tell you how many times I've read over the years that I, I had, I couldn't get my signal low enough because I wanted to make sure I could take full advantage and power of the amp. So I had my gain attenuator knobs all the way up and I couldn't get my signal low enough. I've said it multiple ways there. That's a misnomer. You are not losing full power if you're not here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, you know, there's just a lot of kind of confusion on the whole thing. Yeah. If you cannot, if you're on a fixed amplifier, this is something else I wanted to mention, an audiophile amp for your main speakers, and it's, say, a 32X type stage amplifier. I've had this happen when I had JTR speakers at one point. I had a Emotiva amp, and I can't remember if that was a 29 or a 32X stage amplifier, yeah. but it was fixed. There was no input attenuation. Correct. And my receiver was at negative 12 on every channel because I had JTR speakers and they're like 101 dB sensitive. Yeah. I could not, the receiver could not lower itself low enough to get the signal down. Exactly. These are input, atten uh, input attenuation little deals. I don't know. Let me get it close to the camera so you can see. There you go. Yep. So this one drops it by 15 dB mm -hmm. and this one drops it by 10 dB and they come okay. in lots of different variant sizes and they come in, this is an XLR style. So right. it goes in your signal path. You got your two XLR cables. It clicks into here, and then it clicks into here, and you connect your your components that way, right? It's in the signal path. Mm -hmm. They have these same things in uh, RCA. So if you need to attenuate your signal, if you have too much signal and you are at negative twelve, you don't want that because that means you can't even calibrate reference level. You can't get that seventy five dB at your seat yeah. because it's too loud. You can, it does not enough range in your processor or your or your receiver to lower it. So use these. Mm -hmm. If you have the other problem and you're trying to have to go into the positive, like even plus two, plus three, plus four, it's not really good. Right. Absolutely. What you should do then is buy a, a voltage uh, booster. Mm -hmm. And there's a product that seems to be real popular in the forums for a lot of years called the Art Clean Box Pro. Mm -hmm. So that's something to look in. And you can use that per channel to boost your signal so you don't have to go into the positive on your source, on your speaker level trims or your subwoofer level trims, which will allow you to not have input clipping. Yeah. So just to kind of to kind of confirm what you're talking about, my clips of scalas were technically they're rated 104 dB with one watt. Mm -hmm. And so every time I ran Odyssey, my front three LCR were at negative 12. And in my brain, I'm going, what if it needed to be negative 13 or negative Absolutely. 14 or negative 15 to get it to balance, you know? And so, and then I would have to go back and I couldn't raise them anymore because then it puts my other speakers up too high. And right. people in the forums are like, you need attenuators to put in your, like in line in between to kind of back that, I guess, gain structure down a little bit. Yep. And I think that's what Eric was saying in some of the processors, you physically can adjust that, but you couldn't do that. But he was saying, okay, yeah, that is what he's talking about. By being able to do that, then that would work with an AVR. Yeah, be able to add those attenuators. And and Michael, you just did a good job of explaining that. If you ever run auto EQ and you see negative twelve on your receiver, <laughs> or even positive twelve, both yeah. are not good. Nope. Yeah. You, positive you've positive twelve will be horrible. Yeah, you don't want that. You're yeah, gonna you've exceeded the, the ability of your receiver or pre pro to calibrate it to the proper level. So that channel is not accurate, unless yeah. you just happen to land on twelve, which would be a fluke. That would be uncommon. Yeah. Well, Eric says now he definitely wants to have a conversation with you, man. You explained that extremely well. Mad respect. Amazing explanation. That's what I'm saying, man. These guys are a wealth of knowledge. I'm just here for good looks. Um, <laughs> you know, but uh, man, that's that's super, super helpful because I've never heard that. I was told 
a long now i've only used one pro audio amplifier like what you were showing i think it was a qsc because i had some speakers and i had just a, a small avr now this is way way back when we first moved here so that would have been 17 years ago um i had a small it's probably like an onkyo amplifier avr and i had the rf 83s i'm like and these things can handle more than this receiver can push out. Mm -hmm. And I was a youth pastor and we had, you know, QSC amplifiers in my youth room. So I'm mm -hmm. like, I've got till Wednesday, I can borrow this thing. So I unhooked, you know, one and took it home. And, and at first I, I, I couldn't get hardly any sound out of it. I'm like, what is going on? And I reached out in the forums. They're like, Oh, with those, here's what I was told with QSC amplifiers, you need to turn that thing wide open. They said, it's not a volume thing. Mm -hmm. It's, and they equated it to, it's almost like, uh, like a water spigot. You need to go ahead and open up that spigot to allow as much to come through that conduit as possible. So they were giving me inaccurate. I mean, that wasn't anything. Yeah, that, that, that was totally wrong plan. information. Yeah. And so I um, turned it wide open and then it was like, you know, I got sound, but it wasn't yeah. balanced or anything. Yeah. Well, I, I think that this stems into a lot of different areas. Um, people have these kind of, kind of confusing things. And it, I think it also feeds into this whole idea that like pro audio amps or audiophile amps or any of the different amplifiers can really liven up your system. It's because people aren't doing that SPL test, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm saying this you set really every common. channel to 75 dB here. Somebody swaps out, they're at a receiver, they swap to a fixed 32 amp stage uh, mm -hmm. Emotiva their receiver was not a 32 X stage. So now at the same volume trims, they didn't go through the change of trims. They don't understand this. They don't. And that's okay. Just, yeah. We're learning here. Yeah. Their channel trims are whatever they were. Maybe they're all set to negative six, negative four, that type of thing. Okay. You just went from a, say a 25 X stage to a 32 X stage. Your highs, your main speakers just went seven DB louder by swapping okay. amp. But okay. they're clear. They, so now they're like, wow, listen, everything came to life, right? Now it sounds totally different. My system's never sounded like this. You're ah. listening to it 7 dB louder than you did before. Ah. Get your SPL meter and put back that, your trims, back, down. Your trims yep. back down to where they're 75 dB at your seats. And you're going to be like, why did I just spend another four Good luck right? here in Amplified. the price. <laughs> well, and then this <laughs> is kind of something that you, you brought up, Jonathan, and I think this is part of the confusion, mm -hmm. is I don't have the gains on the power amps no more straight up because if the gains are too high, you start hearing background noise and you can get full power only a third of the way up. Yep. But you get the same thing if you're a third of the way up and increase your input voltage from the preamp. Sure. So it doesn't matter how you're doing this. You can raise the attenuator all the way up and have a really low voltage. And yep. now you're going to hear the background noise. You can have it all the way down and raise the voltage and the same thing's going to happen. So mm. it's it just depends on what you're trying to do. This is why I said six one way half a dozen another you're accomplishing the same thing in two different ways right so i had a question the other day this speaks to that exact thing the guy didn't understand the gain voltage thing as well so he was saying hey i want full power i got my gain knobs maxed out but i got this hiss mm -hmm. and i said well do you does your hiss go away if you back off the knobs to like two-thirds your input attenuator knobs and he's like yeah i can't hear the hiss at all and i said well then let's raise your incoming signal and let's lower it at two thirds and your problem is solved because you're missing nothing at that point and mm -hmm. you're not having the hiss. Your ground floor noise has just dropped. And as long as we're not going into the kind of sh scary realm of like the subwoofer trims or, or above zero for the speaker trims, we're good. And, you're, right. and your problem is solved. I like it, man. So let me just ask you guys, if you found value in that, Throw a little thumb up, man. There's a little thumb button down there somewhere. Let us know, man. I see two thumbs up on this whole live stream. We've been going for an hour and a half. <laughs> John just dropping wisdom and Ryan. So let them know you appreciate them, man. Uh, da, 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 da. What else we got here? Uh, so I, I do have a question on that because I even get confused with the whole 75, 85. Now, my understanding is if I'm running internal test homes and they say, really, you shouldn't do that. No, I didn't agree with that. You can. That you works. Okay. I do. Okay. I do think that's fine. But go ahead. You shouldn't. But if I'm using, say, a Marantz, I run the internal test homes and I'm shooting for 75 because the receiver 
is adding that. I mean, it's basically measuring to 85, but it's only letting my ears hear 75. Is that correct? It's it's running the test tone to be set at 75, and then it's it's internally calculating that to be 85 for actual That's program right. content. That's correct. Yes. Yeah, so it's programming it for 85, but my ears are hearing 75. Your SPO meter is hearing 75. Yes. Yeah, so that it's not too loud in my room. I don't damage my speakers. Right. So my question is, if I'm using an external... Yes. If you go to one of these discs and you play the sine wave, it should be 85. And I, and I validated this tonight just okay, to make okay. sure. That's what I, I guess I heard earlier. Either way you're doing 75 or 75. Okay. No, once you're okay. back at program content, like a disc okay. or a streaming media, that same sign okay. sweep, if you can find it will be 85 because okay, it doesn't have that internal that. processing of the receiver. That's all it's one. Okay. I just mm -hmm. want to clarify that because it sounded like earlier you were saying just 75. Okay. So if you're no. using the internal uh, test tones from your right. AVR or processor, that's going to be 75. But if you're using a disc to do that, you're wanting to your SPL yeah. meter. And, to and I agree 85. with what Tony's saying. I don't know. I don't have any testing to back this up, but mm -hmm. I personally try and get around as much of the internal processing as possible. So if you want a de facto, this is what you're getting. I would always mm -hmm. verify with an external measurement. Mm -hmm. So my most experience is with Dan and Moran's products, and I can tell you that they're pretty much spot on. Because I went mm -hmm. through these discs today to test, and they're sp and they're within a dB, all of them. So from my receiver test tones, it's 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 accurate. Now the other interesting thing is these receiver test tones are all built a little differently. Some of yeah. them are centered at a thousand. Some of them are centered at eight hundred. Um, the so if you so let me so let me rephrase it this way: Be, what the Spears and Munsell one is five hundred to two thousand. Um, so so what that amounts to is, you know how we've talked about frequency response being in your room. Ideally, it would be ruler flat, but it's not because you have modes and nulls in your room based on your placement and your seats and your room boundaries and all that kind of stuff. So if, let's say if, you're, if your disc, like this wow disc, is centered at 800 hertz. If my wow disc is centered at 800 hertz and I happen to have an 800 hertz null or boost in my room on that speaker, guess what happens to my calibration? it's not going to be accurate, right? Because I'm now tuning for something that's a, that's a artifact of the room. The ones that have a wider range, like that Spears and Munsell that's 500 to 2000 is probably a little more accurate, right? Because it's kind of taking a, a broader subset of the frequency response spectrum to make sure that you're, to make sure that you're actually at that level. So depending on your receiver, your receiver has a pure sine wave at a particular Hertz, like say it's a thousand Hertz, sine wave that probably is not a great idea it, it's better to have like a limited band pink pink noise or uh you know like a, a narrow band say 500 to 2000 from that spheres of Munsell is a good idea mm -hmm. so randy says that's it jonathan gets to pick the topics for the breakout sessions at next end wave <laughs> does line level boosters reduce sound quality this is a good this is a good question and I had the same question. So let's talk about it. I have that Omnimic frequency response tool, um, real-time analysis, and I tested these things when I bought them because I was worried about that very thing. Like, wait, am I am I rolling off the high frequencies or am I affecting the bass in any way? The answer is absolutely not. And I was glad to see that because I was worried about it myself. It, it was like when I put this and and these things aren't perfectly accurate let me but put you're that out talking there about reduction he's talking about boosting no i think he's saying do they i read it as do they reduce says, sound the line level boosters reduce the sound quality okay so yeah you're talking you're right Ryan. in his in his situation especially with headphones the problem that people get into is they'll get some not as sensitive headphones as what the amp on their motherboard or whatever they're using can drive more than likely, the simple solution for what you're using, especially if you've got $3,000 headphones, is the headphones aren't sensitive and you need a bigger amp and they need more power. Mm -hmm. And that's going to open them up. I wouldn't use, in your situation, a line level booster. You need more power to go to them from an amplifier. I think if yeah. you use a line level booster for the amount of power that you're going to have to send, um, you're going to induce hissing, hissing in your... your uh, noise floor is going to be really bad. So I would get a quality amp. Look at mono price. They've got great headphone amps. Um, that's where I would start. In regards to these things, and I'm sorry, I misunderstood your question, but these do not change quality. My frequency response graph 
if this says 15 dB, it might be 14, it might be 16, it may not be exactly 15, but again, that doesn't matter because you're matching it with your SPL meter and maybe it's a half dB or more on the on the channel trim. They were they were precisely, I mean, like by the by the number, exactly the same frequency response, just down 15 I mean, dB. Effectively, down, all you're doing is applying a known resistance to the electrical signal, mm -hmm. which should be a known factor and shouldn't affect it at all as long as it's consistent. 